Hello everybody, this is Pun, the Frugal Streamer, and I wanted to talk about stream settings. Now, a lot of people here lately have been asking me about Streamlabs OBS and the best stream settings on there. And uh, can I be honest with you? It, there really isn't a the best settings. Sure, there's basic guidelines that we can go by, but uh, stream settings are so dependent on the individual uh, because, you know, it's really dependent on your streaming setup um, whether or not you have a one or two PC streaming setup, uh, whether or not you have a dedicated streaming PC. And number two, what are your viewers? Are you a big streamer? Are you a small streamer? Are you trying to attract viewers? That's really going to determine what your stream settings are going to be. And you may think, what? That doesn't make any sense. Well, sure. Well, and I'll talk to you about that here in a second. But, you know, if you're a Twitch streamer, Twitch has done a really nice job. And I'm sure you too and Mixer have done the same thing. And I'll probably go look those up. And if they have these guidelines, which I'm getting ready to show you what Twitch uh, has come up with, um, if they have guidelines, I will post them down in the comments. But Twitch has come up with some guidelines on streaming. So I'm going to show you these right now. And I'm basically going to cover 1080p60 and 720p60. Uh, because 1080p30 and 720p60 are basically the same thing. They're going to basically have the same settings other than resolution or frame rate. And so... 1080p60 is kind of what everybody's really wanting to do nowadays, especially if you're a partnered streamer and you have the ability to support the upload uh, bitrate that's required, which here Twitch tells you between 4,500 and 6,000 is what they require for a 1080, what they recommend for a uh, 1080p60 to get the best quality video as possible. And they're telling you to use X264. Now in OBS, it says it's X264. But they're saying to use either main or high for your profile and then using a 4.2 level for 1080p60. Uh, down here, 720p60, they're saying instead use a 4.1. Key interval still two seconds, still using a main or high profile for, uh, I'm going to say X264. And, uh, you know, still the frame rate of 60. Uh, but you can see the difference between the bit rate. They're saying here between 3,500 and 5,000. Okay. Now, I personally stream at 3,700, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Okay. So let's go ahead now, and I'll bring up my OBS. And we'll go to settings, and I'll bring up my output here. And this is kind of the meat and potatoes. Here and video are two areas you need to concentrate. So I've, you know, I have my base canvas set to 1080p. And then I downscale it, and, of course, down here is the frame rate that you need to choose. Uh for uh frame rate now here's a discussion with frame rate uh common versus integer okay common is going to just list a bunch of common fps values in this pull down integer you, you're going to enter it there's been a discussion and i personally i don't know if i haven't tested this um but there has been a discussion i've seen a few videos where they have talked about common using a common SP, fps value um will cause drop frames uh in obs and by switching it to integer and then selecting 60 uh you have less drop frames now, i'm just telling you this is what i've heard i'm not saying it's true or not i really don't have any evidence of it personally uh, but that's something to consider if you're just having a lot of drop frames and you're using common fps values shift it to integer put 60 in there if you want to stream 60 fps and see what happens if your drop frames go away, then hey, there's a problem, right? Anyway, I personally haven't noticed. Um, but that being said, I figure I want to say that real quick. So let's go ahead and go to output. Okay, so output, I recommend you go to output mode and selecting advanced. Um, don't even mess with simple, please. Uh, just go into advanced. It's not hard to understand. All right, so I told you to, before, uh, I'm using X264 encoding. Um, if you're streaming on a single PC, slash gaming rig and you're streaming at the same time on it uh you may or not may or may not be able to use x264 it's very cpu intensive um but you can use other ver other things like invink um but it it comes with a cost okay invink uh requires higher bit rate to achieve the same amount of quality that you would get from x264 uh because NVENC is a hardware encoder, X264 software encoder. It has better quality. But if you're suffering from a lot of CPU loss 
and frame rate loss out of your game, you may not have an option. So that's something to think about. Um, but personally, I have a I have a separate streaming PC, so I use X264. Then I have rescale output check, and I'm checking it. I'm bringing it down to 720p. Now I'm using a CBR rate control. Uh, CBR for streaming, that's what you really need to use. Okay, I'm not even going to argue. Um, you can see all the other options here. They're all versions of variable bit rate. Okay, uh, CRF, you're actually setting a quality setting saying, hey, I want whatever bit rate is needed to go to this quality. Um, that's for recording, though. I don't think you don't, I don't want, you shouldn't have to set a CRF for this. Uh, CBR, um, just use CBR and then set your bit rate to what Twitch recommends based on your resolution and frame rate that you're trying to send. For me, I send 3,700. Pun, why do you use 3,700? I'm glad you asked. Okay, so my measured upload speed for my internet here at home is about anywhere from 5 to about 5.6. Usually it hovers around 5.4, okay, or, or 5,400 up. So I want to shoot for about 75% of that and still have about 25% of wiggle room, okay? In the event that there's something else going in the house, somebody else is doing something, and I have that wiggle room so that I don't cause drop frames, you know, and I cause buffering on the other end for the viewers. So I leave mine at 3,700. Uh, if I get up to about 4,200, 4,300, I notice I start having issues. So, um, so I just leave mine at 3,700. So you need to understand, you need to go to like speedtest.net or one of these other sites that can measure your upload speed of your internet. Get you a number, take that, 75% of that, set that as your bit rate, okay? All right, so keyframes, Twitch recommends using two, okay? Default is zero and zero is auto. That's what they say. Twitch says use two, all right? So I use two because I'm going to listen to Twitch. All right, now CPU uses preset. Now, this is a key. Most people use very fast, okay? And very fast is perfectly fine. Um, if you can handle a higher um, or a lower CPU preset, then use it. But the expense is that you're going to use more CPU. That's the key. So if I would recommend starting it very, pat, very fast, set up all your settings, see where your CPU usage sits. If you're in this 50 to 60% range, I would leave it at very fast. If you're at very fast and you're seeing 75% and you start seeing overloading, then you need to shift it up to super fast or even ultra fast, which we hope you don't have to use ultra fast. But if you're using an older CPU, you might have to use ultra fast. Uh, but I recommend starting it very fast and then figuring out where you sit there. If you're using hardly any CPU at all in very fast at 1080p or 720, then you can, you know, you got wiggle room here with your preset and you, you know, you can make it look better and use more CPU. You know, I use faster personally. So profile, I use, uh, main, I use high. Okay. Again, I'm trying to get as much quality as I can. Uh, tune, I leave that as zero. I don't know anybody that uses this, to be honest with you. I've never heard of anybody say, hey, I use film or animation or grain. Uh, uh, no. So leave it at none. Just do yourself a favor. Now, I've been testing B frames or what they call bi-directional frames. Um, if you leave this blank and under X264 options, and you leave this blank, uh, I've read that your B frames by default is three. Okay. What X264 uses. I've been testing to see if using increasing your B frames incre uh, increases your video quality. The theory behind it and the thought behind it and what most people say is yes, it does because the more B frames you use, the more chance your encoder is going to pick B frames to render, and therefore your quality is going to. Um, become better uh, so if you have a b if you have b frames of three then there's a less chance that your encoder will pick b frames they don't your encoder does not have to use b frames all the time and it doesn't um but you know the more b frames you have available the better chance it is it's probably going to pick one and the qual higher quality your video will be downside again more b frames higher cpu usage more encoding 
So that's another thing you have to balance. Okay, so that's really it. Uh, it's super easy. Uh, so just keep in mind, now, what I was talking about with between partner streamers and uh, you guys starting out. Okay, so you have a guy. His name is Joe, right? Let's say Joe is watching on a really old PC, like an old laptop. It's about five or six years old. And he's he is watching on an internet speed that is like 10 meg down. Okay. So, and his mom's trying to surf the internet and his dad's streaming Spotify and he's trying to watch you on Twitch. Okay. If you're a new streamer, you're trying to attract, attract as many people as possible. So if you're attempting to stream at 1080p 60, which Twitch recommends at least 4,500 to have a quality stream, then you are going to limit your viewer base because there's people out there that just will not be able to watch you unless you have transcoding or most people refer to as quality settings in Twitch. As a non-partnered streamer, that means that there's a chance that you may not have the quality settings when you're streaming. It really depends on how many people are in your stream. Now, used to, it, there was a, you know, a guideline that people were saying that, hey, you had to have a certain percentage of viewers for the total viewers within a certain game. So if I was streaming uh, Rainbow Six Siege, for instance, and there was, you know, 3,500 people watching that game live on Twitch, and I'm streaming that game, then I have to have, they, I, I've heard 10% total viewership. So the, 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 that is kind of how they were saying it worked. And typically that worked. Okay. If you were getting around 35, 40 viewers in a game, like Battlefield or something like that, then typically you would end up getting transcoding. Anything less than that, more than likely you weren't. Nowadays, they've increased it to where more people get it. Um, especially it gives, you know, affiliates more of a chance to get it. And non partnered streamers, non affiliates, will also get transcoding if they have, you know, I would say five to 10 viewers in their channel. But that's something you have to pay attention to. You just can't assume you're going to have quality settings. So if you're starting out, you need to start out at a low bit rate so that people can watch your stream without buffering because if they buffer a lot, they're going to turn you off and they're going to move elsewhere. Uh, if they have quality settings, and at that point, then they can turn it down or it'll be an auto, and then it will adjust based on what their uh, internet can handle. Okay, And that's the wonderful thing about quality settings. Partners get it automatically. Affiliates and non-partners get it, you know, whenever. And and sometimes you don't, sometimes you do. Um, I don't know the guidelines behind it now, but um, most of the time I do have it, okay? Sometimes I don't. Um, but in any case, that's something you need to keep in mind. Also, another thing to keep in mind that goes along with that is that there's a lot of people that are watching on mobile devices, okay? And then if, if they're on their data plan, okay, they are not going to watch a stream that's streaming 1080p60 on their tablet when they're running on their data, especially if, they're, if they have a data cap, okay? Because they'll burn that mess up in a heartbeat. They're going to watch a streamer that's streaming at a lower bit rate, okay? And they're going to have those quality settings on auto so that, you know, they can adjust it down whatnot. And that's something to keep in mind, especially the viewers now that a lot of people are watching on mobile. Uh, so if you want to open up your viewership for a new streamer, you really need to consider dropping your bit rate down to 2,500 or 3K at the most. And, uh, you know, and then at least allowing your viewers to watch a smooth stream, vice a nice quality 1080p stream or a nice quality crisp 720p. Yes, you're going to have a little more pixelation but your stream's going to be, uh, it'll still look okay. It'll still look fine, I think. And at the same time, you're still going to be smooth and it won't be that buffering. Okay, so that's really a key, right? So anyway, guys, I wanted to talk about that real quick. Other than that, that is really it for the stream settings. Uh, again, there's no perfect solution for stream uh, settings. Every stream, I can't tell you that my settings are good for you or, or bad for you. It really depends on what you have, what your uh, computer can handle. So, with that being said, guys, this is from Pun to Frugal Streamer. Goodness, I mean, it's getting late here in, in Virginia. Anyway, uh, make sure you hit the like if this helped you out. Subscribe to the channel for all these uh, cool slobs and Streamlabs uh, 
uh, chat bot and voice meter banana tutorials that I'm teaching you how to stream for free on the cheap. All right, this is Pun Friends Streaming. Be good. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.